How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the universal basic income concept, also known as UBI. Now, this is a topic that has been discussed at nauseum for quite a long time. The idea behind it is, well, since the government gives out all these benefits, food stamps, uh, EBT, WIC, TANF, whatever, to families, and it's a cumbersome process, it could be a lot of red tape behind it and it's inefficient rather than doing all of that just give every american a set amount of money per month as kind of a stipend just for living i suppose i'm not really sure but that is the idea people have debated with me about it and time and time again i say that it's not a good idea now before we get into why it's not going to be a good idea the reason why i'm bringing it up today is because you have two american cities that are going to implement this or that at least want to implement this the first is stockton california which is bankrupt as far as i know if i'm wrong let me know in the comments but they're bankrupt the money that they're going to have for the ubi which by the way is going to be 500 bucks a month to about 300 families for a year the money will come from a private source for the most part. You know, they, they're saying it's gonna be private now, but who knows, it may be six months on the line and they say, okay, now we need some help from the California government or Stockton's government. The co-founder of Facebook, Chris Hughes has a fund. I forget what it's called, but I will put information about that in the box. The fund will be the vehicle from which the assets will be distributed, okay? Now, in the case of Chicago, Illinois, the other city talking about UBI, an alderman who was a failed gubernatorial candidate is basically coming up with a proposal that is going to try to get implemented some kind of way from the governor, mayor, or whatever. He has no idea how it's going to be funded. He wants to give that same 500 bucks a month to 1,000 families. I'm not really sure how long. I don't really know how he's going to pick the families, but that is what he wants to do now i think both cities or both situations have been supported with the whole alaska situation now in alaska the oil and gas companies give each citizen a stipend of two grand a year not a month but a year which is about 170 bucks a month so people are saying well if alaska can do it then why not stockton why not chicago well first of all the money actually has a source all right and the source is not going to go away anytime soon everybody needs gas everybody needs oil it's a lot of it up there in alaska so the oil companies private industry says okay here's your check for living in alaska that's fine if you want to have a private company do that the issue is when the government takes tax money and then gives it back to the citizens see now you're getting into a whole different situation now you are starting to get into socialism and communism which is what I think these people in Stockton and also Chicago want. In Chicago, they have no idea how they're gonna fund it. They're gonna go right to the state to get them to figure it out. Whereas it should be a private industry, if anything. I don't believe in a UBI for a few reasons I'll get to, but I definitely don't believe in public interest funding something that should be done privately. And it really shouldn't be done at all. In Stockton's case, they're going to get the money from this fund from the Facebook guy. But how long is that going to last? And why is it only like 300 families? Why not everybody? And then what is the criteria? How long are they going to be able to be on it? They're saying in Stockton, it's going to be for a year. But what about when the year is over? Does money just stop? You're not going to continue it. Why would you not continue it? Why not give it to more families? At the end of the day, UBI is not going to work. The argument behind it is, well, since you have 40 something million people on food stamps, people on unemployment, um, all types of government programs where money is essentially distributed to people, then the UBI will be much cleaner and easier. But here's the thing. You don't want people to be on food stamps forever. You don't want them to be on unemployment forever. You don't want them to be taking from the government forever. It should be a temporary measure. UBI is a permanent measure. They want it to be like what they have in Alaska with the oil money. As long as you live, you get this amount of money per month. Now, that is not going to work because of the obvious reason. You got to have the money come from somewhere. Where will this program be funded from? Okay. 
as of right now, there's some money in the coffers of the Facebook guys fund, but how does the money get replenished and how are you going to scale it? They're talking about 300 families. Well, what's to prevent people from around the country moving to Stockton to try and take advantage of it? And why would you just limit it to a certain amount of people? And does that have to be like an income restriction? Like, how are you going to do that? See, in a UBI system, you're going to have a bunch of red tape anyway if it's going to be limited to people. And if it's not going to be limited, you're not going to be able to fund it. You're probably not going to be able to fund it on a small scale because you got to figure out where the money's going to come from. In Chicago, they have no idea. Is it going to come from taxpayers' money? Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather have more of my own money in my pocket rather than having more money taken from me to be given back to me, but a lesser percentage of it. Obviously, if they take money from you, you would not get the same amount back. You would get a lesser amount back. Why not just allow me to have my own money? I mean, that just kind of makes sense to me. But for now, I digress. The next thing about UBI that people are not really talking about is... What happens if everyone gets this money, this 500 bucks a month, 1,000 bucks a month, I've heard that floated around. When everyone gets that money, every citizen, man, woman, child, in perpetuity, what you do is you raise the floor. You, you don't actually, you don't fix anything. So let's say, for example, the cheapest food item you're able to get at a fast food spot right now is like a dollar. If everybody's getting 1,000 bucks a month, Every citizen in the United States is getting that much money or even 500 bucks a month. Then the price can raise. You can afford it. You got the money. Why would the price not raise? The floors become higher. People are just getting, you're going to reduce income inequality, but you're also going to make everyone have less money overall. Rather than people being up here as far as the wealth and the wealth of gap, you reduce the gap, but you bring everybody down here. It doesn't make any sense. This is what happens with communism and socialism. People talking about, oh, well, since there's going to be more automation, there's going to be less jobs. Therefore, the government needs to provide jobs and they need to provide money. Well, since when did the government do these things? Well, I mean, we see what's going on with the Veterans Hospital. I mean, that is a total mess. And you're going to try to bring those same people or not the exact same people that work at the VA, but you're gonna bring government who has no actual incentive to improve their services. So that's one thing about the private industry. They have incentive to improve, okay? They have competition. Facebook has to keep innovating and doing new things because they're competing with Twitter, with Google Plus or whatever other platform is out there. You always have to try and create new things and do things better. But if all social media was owned by the government, we still be looking like AOL out here because there would be no reason to actually advance or do anything that would improve things. People that look at automation as a loss of jobs and not a gain don't really understand how economies work. At one point in time, you had like an 80 to 90% agrarian society in the USA. Mostly everybody was a farmer or worked somehow related to a farm, um, picking cotton, picking strawberries, um, raising cow, sheep, whatever. That was pretty much your life and jobs that were revolving around it. As late as maybe even the early 1900s, that was the truth for most Americans. But as technology improved, a lot of those jobs became unnecessary for most Americans to do. I mean, you have so many advances in irrigation i mean you have so many things going on that it's it, it requires a fraction of the people to work these farms than it did in the past that doesn't mean that because 80 to 90 percent of america was at one point agrarian now most of that is automated that there are no more jobs for americans as a result of technology advancing more jobs have been created take a look at the refrigerator I mean, what did we do before the refrigerator? A lot of times we had to get fresh food from a farmer's market or something like that, cook it that day. You had to go out there and hunt or you had to go, eventually you had like refrigerated vehicles or people that had ice trucks and you had to get your food delivered to you that way and cook it right away. But now you have a refrigerator in your house and you can go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of food. All kind of companies are sprung up as a result of that. You have food coming from all over the world. You have people that work in the stores. It's all types of jobs that have been created from 
automation from advances in technology just because there may not be a person that the actual uh what's it the, the cashier stand at mcdonald's and it would be a kiosk instead does not mean that there will be no more human involvement with jobs at mcdonald's because somebody has to program these machines they have to be serviced you know ai that's a whole different ball game because with ai you may have so-called self-servicing machines but you still need human beings to actually make all these things operate all right we're not quite at the point where ai is taking over humanity and we're looking like uh skynet you could just plug your brain in and the machines take over we're not quite there yet you still need a lot of human interaction service industries you're talking about a hairstylist um people that work in your vehicle all types of service-based industries that machines cannot replace and as you come up with more technology more jobs are created think about the smartphone all right think about the smartphone right here you know how many jobs were created as a result of the advent of the smartphone i mean think about uber lyft you got all these delivery services that get stuff straight to your door uh, think about how much amazon is blown up walmart all these firms that rely on tech that was not available years past there's always going to be a new way of doing things there's always going to be innovation don't be afraid of innovation think about how you're going to benefit from it and don't just have a defeatist attitude like well if x y and z job goes away there will be no job to replace it or there will be no other opportunities available don't look at it as a zero-sum game where it's like okay if i lose this and i can't get anything else look at it as just evolve you, you change okay when you are a child you may have a very light voice you lose that voice and you gain a deeper voice okay just because you lose your light voice does not mean you won't have a voice at all i mean you gotta look at things as evolving and changing not just going away or deprecating that's not how economies work so i say all that to say this the ubi not necessary because a where are you going to get the money B, if you have the money, how are you going to keep the money coming in? C, just because some jobs become automated does not mean that there will not be any new jobs. You don't need to have this thing. And lastly, you need to have people get off of welfare. So the argument about, well, UBI could replace welfare. From what I understand, UBI is going to be a thing you have in perpetuity. Welfare should only be for a short period of time, a year, maybe two years. You need to move on with your life. Temporary assistance. What we should do as our close is empower charities. If it's about poverty, if it's about not having access to food, there are plenty of people out here that have means of being able to uh, make a living for themselves. And they are more than willing to give to charities, churches, food banks, or whatever. That should be who we rely upon to help those who cannot help themselves for whatever the case may be for a short period of time. We should not be creating a society of people that always feel like there should be an entitlement given to them just because they are an American citizen or just happen to be a human being that has a heartbeat. So what do you think? Do you think the UBI is a good idea? If you think so, please explain to me in the comments below why you think that way. How much money should be given every month from the UBI? Where's the money going to come from? That's my biggest question because in Chicago, they don't even really know. They have the aldermen coming out with a proposal to the mayor and the governor asking them, how are we going to fund it? They don't even really know. So if you know, let me know in the comments. But do you think that I'm on point that UBI is not a good idea? All you do is raise the floor. You create a sense of dependency. You put the government in control of a thing that they should not be in control of the ability of an american citizen to gain wealth to make a living for themselves should be in their hands it shouldn't be dictated by the federal government that's how you get more poverty when you have more bureaucracy more red tape that's how you have more poverty and that's how you have more governmental control okay you don't want that in your life you want the government to be as small as possible to be almost invisible just a basic layer to you know roads schools or whatever the basic stuff i'm not saying it's like super basic and not really important what i'm saying is they should not be involved with your everyday life your food clothing and shelter you need to take care of that
there are opportunities abundant, a lot of unfilled jobs in America, trucking, shipping or whatever, uh, a lot of tech jobs that are available. All you need to do as a citizen is to prepare yourself and to prepare your children for the outside world and not have them be stuck with this dependent upon the state mindset. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.